Hey, hey, for less than $10, I was able to find a little adapter ring that let me use an old lens like this on a new camera like this. Let me explain, and then I'll tell you the story of where all this came from. So anyway, this little ring is what they call an M42 Type 1 adapter for Nikon cameras, although they probably have the exact same thing for Canon and some other lenses. But if you look, this lets you take old thread mount lenses, which were common way back in the day. So you take it and just thread it on like you would any sort of threaded adapter device thing. And then on the other side, it just has a bayonet like it does for any sort of Nikon camera. So you just line up the dots and attach it like that. And now you've got this old camera that attaches. The challenge is this camera doesn't have any autofocus capabilities. This one in particular has a little switch to go between auto and manual aperture controls. And so then you can adjust the aperture and it will let you focus with it. And then you can focus it manually. I want to open up the aperture and then you can see. Just a quick review of this little adapter. This is the photo C. Again, the link is down in the description so you can pull uh, the whole thing up on Amazon. I do get a small referral commission for providing those links, but that just helps you support the channel, support me just a little bit. Maybe I'll make some more videos about these things. But uh, some of the reviews said this thing was really thin and I was worried it was gonna be really, really flimsy. Uh, it's actually feels pretty solid. I'm not too concerned about it bending. Uh, even with a lens that weighs a pound and a half like this, uh, it seems like it would be pretty good and hasn't really had any issues. I'm not sure if people just got bad ones or if they got bent in transit somehow. I, I don't know. What's nice about this that the T ring doesn't have is this little flange. And I'll get a little close up of that flange. That little flange is pretty critical because on the back of these lenses is a pin just to leave it wide open while you're looking at it and then when it takes the picture it pushes that pin in to lower the aperture down to the desired amount. But that flange, if you look, actually sits and pushes that pin down. So that way it turns a purely automatic focus lens like this 50 millimeter one into a manual focus lens. So when you turn the aperture ring, it open it and closes the aperture, which it does not do with just a simple T ring because it doesn't have that flange. So you could either try to put your own flange on there. This larger 200 millimeter lens happens to have an auto or manual focus slider on it so that it will basically push that pin in itself so that you can just always use the aperture ring on this lens even if you don't have that flange. But without that flange, this 50 millimeter lens would not be able to be manually adjusted from the aperture and it would always just be wide open, which could be okay. And I'm sure you could get by with that in most situations. But if you wanna have that control, it's really nice to be able to have that flange on there pushing the little ring in. So like I said, at $10, it's almost a no-brainer if you've got an old lens like this that you know it'll fit on. You could even get multiple. I'm considering maybe buying another one just so I can leave them on the lenses if I'm going to use them. Well, I'm gonna see how often I actually use these lenses to play around with. If I end up using them a lot, it'd probably be worth just buying a couple of them and just leaving them on there. That way I never even have to take them off or move it around and they basically become manual focus lenses for my modern camera. Anyways, back to the story. So how did I find all this out? Well, I got this old camera from my dad. I was down visiting them and he said, I have this old camera that I got back in the 70s. And this is actually a Sears Auto TLS camera. And it's really nice, has a, you know, it's a nice film camera. Uh, all very manual controlled, big manual focus lens. Uh, it's a 55 millimeter uh, fixed lens on there with a, looks like it goes to a 1.4 aperture, but it has thread mounts, which, you know, Sears isn't exactly making cameras anymore, or 
I don't think so because Sears I don't think is around anymore, but it has these little threads. So what I did is if you go check a video that I'll link to, uh, I think the video is on this side maybe? I don't know. There was a video about hooking your Nikon camera up to a telescope and that uses a T-ring adapter and a T-ring and that T-ring had threads on it. So just for fun, I decided to see if those threads were the same ones that I needed. And they were, which is neat because this is actually adapted for a Nikon camera. So that means that you could take this and put it on there. So you might think, well then what's that other thing you bought? What's that other little silver ring for? And there's links below for all this down in the description for all these uh, different pieces I'm showing. Well, that works okay, but what I noticed was that I couldn't focus very far away. It almost felt like it had become a macro lens, not a real great macro lens. I could only focus on things in about this range. So maybe six inches to eight inches. Not at all what you can do when you have this lens hooked up to there. Then what I realized is there was a pretty significant difference. The image plane had changed a lot between the two cameras. The image plane is what used to be called the film plane, some people call it the focus plane, but it's basically where the sensor or the film sits inside your camera and the distance from there to the lens was pretty significantly different. Here's what's neat. You can actually see where the film plane is on a camera, on a new one or an old one from the 60s or 70s, by looking for this little mark. It looks like a little circle with a line through it. And that line is basically where the film sits inside the camera. Or on a DSLR, where the sensor is down inside the camera. So if you get out your calipers, and a speed square or something to kind of get a little closer. This isn't going to be super scientific. You can see that the distance between the sensor plane and the back edge of the lens, just for reference, is right about 58 or 59 millimeters. Now let's connect it to the old camera and see what that distance is. It's only around 46 millimeters, which is significantly different. It may not sound like a lot, but when you're talking about focusing on a lens, a few millimeters makes a big difference. And in fact, if you look up extension tubes, that's a way that you can make a macro lens from almost any lens by just adding some space between your camera and this lens that you would normally use for any other purpose. Here's a random uh, 50 millimeter uh, 1.4 Nikon lens. And so if you put an extension tube on this one, uh, you'll get that same effect of kind of having a macro lens that really changes your depth of focus. So after realizing that, I realized that what I needed to get was something that was thinner than this T ring so that that distance would be closer to the 46 millimeters that I was trying to get. So lo and behold, I searched on Amazon, did a little digging around, looked up what the threads were on a T ring, figured out it's a M42.75 pitch, also known as an M42 type one ring and I found a couple of them. Uh, the one that I linked below seemed pretty solid, had pretty decent reviews, not perfect reviews, but you can't always count on every single review. It seemed okay, and for less than $10, it was kind of worth the risk. If it turned out to be really good, I might buy one of the better ones I saw that was only $20, but this one seems pretty solid. So what's the difference if I take this adapter, I can use a different lens. It still needs to have that same 46 millimeters, but what is it on this lens? So with this adapter, it's closer to 43 millimeters, which is a lot closer to that 46. These numbers are just for illustrative purposes. Please don't get on to me if these aren't the exact right numbers for these cameras and lenses. I'm just trying to illustrate that with the T ring, it's a little further out turns them into macro lenses, and with the actual M42 Type 1 adapter that uh, you should use, you'll have a much better range on this. Uh, the same thing happened with this 200 millimeter uh, manual or automatic with, a, with the Sears camera uh, lens. It'll be able to focus much better than with the T-ring that I had used originally from my telescope adapter. 
One thing worth noting is that even with this, the distance is still larger than it is on the original camera, and so you're still gonna get some of that macro effect. You'll have a little bit more distance, especially with something like a 200 millimeter, but with the 50 millimeter, I found that you really only have from maybe a foot to five or six feet uh, that you can get in focus with this particular lens. Your mileage will vary based on the lens that you have. So a little bit more about these lenses. These lenses, like I said, are from a Sears Auto TLS. This is an old camera, but it seems to work pretty well. Now, this would also be a full frame camera because it's using the full 35 millimeter frame of a piece of film. Whereas this particular Nikon camera is a DX, which means that it's using a half size frame. And what that always means is that any sort of lens you put on it, whether it's a brand new Nikon 50 millimeter lens or something from the 70s, you basically have to take the number that's listed and multiply that by 1.5 to get the effective lens range rating, whatever you want to call it. So this 200 millimeter is actually kind of like a 300 millimeter on this lens. So it really shoots in pretty tight. This lens won't even let you focus less than about six feet away. So I can't even focus on the screen in front of me because it's too close. So I can only focus on something behind it that's maybe about six feet away. So if you're trying to keep a six foot distance, you can look through this and say, if you're not sharp, you're not six feet away. And it's pretty neat for all that, but it really brings it in. This other one is a 50 millimeter, which means that it becomes more like a 75. But I'm used to that because I have this Nikkor 50 millimeter uh, 1.4 aperture lens that I uh, picked up a couple years ago. But I can tell you, this one from the 70s, these things are all metal and they weigh a lot more. Let me do a couple of quick comparisons. A modern Nikon autofocus 50 millimeter lens weighs 222 grams, whereas this one from the 70s, the Sears ones, uh, weighs 250 grams. Not a huge difference, a little bit more, because it's still just, you know, a little bit more metal instead of plastic, but not too big of a difference. The real difference is when you take a 55 to 200, this is a Nikon DX AFS Nikkor 55 200, one point, or four to 5.6, zoom lens and it weighs 336 grams whereas this honking guy weighs 743 grams that's over twice as much and this isn't a zoom this is just a fixed 200 millimeter lens the other thing that's kind of crazy about this one is the amount of twisting you have to do when you're focusing so let me just show you this on this 55 200 modern zoom lens i have you basically focus, and if you start here, let's just say at the top of the lens, and you wanna focus it all the way as much as it can, there, it is maybe a quarter turn. And I think it might not even be that. I think it might be an eighth. Yeah, that's probably an eighth of a turn. No matter where you are on the zoom range, you're about an eighth of a turn away from any sort of focus that you need, if you're doing it manually. And to go all the way from 55 to 200 is probably about a quarter turn. So you can really adjust quickly. If you're uh, wanting to zoom out, zoom in, uh, it's pretty quick. So that's nice. Check this out. If you're as focused as closely as possible, so about six feet out, you're focusing. Now, what if you wanna focus on something 40 feet away. I'd say that's probably about the maximum because of the distance and not being able to get quite to the exact same focal distance. So how much is it to focus 40 feet away? So, so watch this turn. So here, I'm going to start at the top. That's right. Still going. It is three quarters of the way around the lens to go from one focus to you know, one end of the focus spectrum to the other end. Pretty far. So I can say when I've been using this thing and playing around, it's like, oh, I wanna focus on something farther. And it feels like I'm having to like twist, 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 twist to get there because yeah, you're, you get used to something where maybe a quarter of the uh, turn to do it. 
So uh, something that's kind of fun with these it makes it where uh, your focus is going to stay pretty locked in because you got to move this thing quite a bit to adjust it. But ironically, uh, it also has a pretty shallow depth of field, so uh, not much will be in focus uh, unless you get it right. One thing to remember anytime you're hooking up an old lens to a modern camera, there's not all the connections that can help the camera understand how it needs to meter. But in every modern DSLR, there should be a way to go in and manually say, I know you don't know anything about this lens, let me tell you about it. This one has a 3.5 aperture or an 8 aperture or whatever, and you can basically say, I'll let you know what the right number is, and then you can do your metering better and it can adjust shutter speed and ISO and all of those things to try to get as good a picture as possible, you know, auto leveling at least uh, for exposure. And so if you tell a little bit about the lens, you can probably do some pretty nice metering. But uh, if you don't tell it, you should just put it on manual mode and then you can say, you know what, I'm just going to set the shutter speed, set the ISO, and I can adjust the aperture on the outside of the lens myself and I'll just have to take a few shots, test shots, but you'll have to adjust all those settings as you go. So yeah, what do you think? You can take an old lens off of an old camera from the 60s or 70s, store brand Sears, probably Pentax, maybe Ricoh or uh, some other brand. Uh, Sears rebranded a few different lenses and camera systems uh, for their own purposes, but the lenses are still pretty good and they can give you a real neat effect and it's just how do you hook them up to a new camera 10 bucks off amazon or a lot of other places uh, you can find those same adapters on b and h uh, and you know most camera uh, stores you know most online camera stores will have a pretty good selection and you should be able to find a similar adapter but you're looking for the m42 type 1 for this with the 0.75 millimeter pitch there are some m42 threads that are at a one millimeter pitch and i believe that's known as type 2. so you need to just think about what it is that you've got do a little bit of testing. If you can find any specs online, those can be great to look up. Uh, but then you can take an old lens, try it out. It can be, uh, if nothing else, kind of fun to play with, but you might be able to get some neat pictures, maybe do some neat uh, portraiture or uh, just some you know, different types of landscapes or uh, even some macro photography. If you uh, get out your T-ring for your T-adapter, uh, you might be able to take that and do some interesting macro photography uh, with an old lens like this. And when you need that manual setup anyway, uh, why not use something good? Just uh, start lifting weights now because these old lenses uh, definitely uh, weigh a lot. <laughs> so, uh, but they're, they're pretty solid. You definitely won't feel bad about knocking them around just a little bit because they're, they're going to hold up pretty well. So questions, comments, have you been sitting on one of these because it's got some really weird threads and you didn't think there was any way to hook it up to a new camera? 10 bucks, that's all it costs or less. And you can probably find a way to do it. Stay safe, stay cool, and have a good one.